Good morning. I think we're live. Can't tell. I think we're live. It's always so confusing. Hi, my name is Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey. The grandfather clock is chiming, so it must be time to start talking. Um, I'm going to talk today about kind of the nuts and bolts of the ketogenic diet. For those of you who are uh, new to either me or to the ketogenic diet, I've lost 97.4 pounds um, since having started the ketogenic diet in January of 2014, so coming up on four years. I'm 115 and a half pounds off my heaviest, so um, I've lost a lot of weight. <laughs> I hope you guys can uh, see me here. I am going to be toggling back and forth because there is a lot of technology going on here, for me anyway. And I do want to, to touch on something, and that is um, that keto sometimes can seem too good to be true. Mm. Cuckoo, sorry. Thank you. Cuckoo and I have a love-hate relationship. I love it and it hates me. We, I keep trying to adjust the time. Anyway, to some people, the ketogenic diet, one thing, is foreign. I mean, they were saying, what is it? And we're going to talk about that. And to some people, it sounds too good to be true. And to some people, it sounds like a gimmick. And many people think it's a fad. So, let's just start. Um, for... Those of you who don't know, a ketogenic nutrition protocol, and I don't mind calling it a diet. I'm using it as a, as a noun, Some, not a diet as a verb like I am dieting, but a diet as in this is my diet. This is the food I eat. A ketogenic diet means when you have reduced your carbohydrate intake sufficiently so that your liver is not pumping out glucose, sugar. And when that happens, our body happily turns to burning an alternative fuel source, and some would say a preferred fuel source, namely fat. So, um, and excuse me, I'm looking to make sure that everything is on track again. I get distracted easily. Um, so, and fat, so, but as when the body is burning fat, it's said to be burning ketones for fuel. It's mobilizing fat, it's burning ketones for fuel that are, and, and it's very happy to do so. Um, so that's all that means, that you have switched from burning glucose or sugar for fuel to burning fat or ketones for fuel. And how do you get there? Um... I mean, some people don't know what a carbohydrate is. I, I don't know that I did when I started. When it's not innate knowledge. And, um, you know, I don't think it's necessarily anything that's taught in school, unless you happen, happen to be studying nutrition. Carbohydrates, in very simple terms, uh, when, in, in re regards to food, is food that comes from just about anything that is not of or from an animal. Everything else is essentially a carbohydrate. Um, I'm going to interrupt myself again. I can't see messages for some reason. So I apologize for that. I'm going to try to um, come back in this because I, I simply cannot see. There we go. I can't see comments. Okay. So anything else that's not of or from an animal is a carbohydrate. Some plant foods may have some protein and some animal products like eggs have a trace of carbohydrate. So there is a little bit of crossover, but let's not make this complicated. I'm telling you keto is not complicated. Some would have us believe that it is and we have to ask the reason, why do you want me to think this is complicated? Are you trying to sell me something to make it simpler? Hmm, because you don't really need anything. But back to back to the topic. So, what the, the the rule of thumb for a ketogenic diet is: 
Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein. Eat only when you're hungry. Stop when you're satisfied. Okay, so what does 20 grams of carbohydrate look like? That's a good question. This is something I had to learn. So I got out my um, USDA food database, not the food pyramid, the food database, which is actually a database of food. And I got my OXO food scale, which I like, but you don't need one. You can really just kind of I eyeball it, and I'll tell you that in a minute. And I started learning that although we have been, many of us, raised to believe that veggies are free foods, you need tons of them. That is not correct. And they are not free foods. They're, well, that's where carbohydrates are going to come from. So I had to learn that a half a plate of broccoli is not what I need to be eating. Although I love broccoli. It's more like this. Non-starchy vegetables in the amount of essentially the size of your fist. Pre-cooked. And leafy greens, essentially the size of two of your fists. And that's pretty much all you need to know. Keep in mind, you don't, that's not a minimum. That's a maximum. I go many days without eating any vegetables. So, to recap, what are carbohydrate? Carbohydrate comes from non-animal sourced food. How many grams a day should I be eating? to be following the ketogenic protocol. 20 grams or fewer a day, not percentage. No percentages, keep it simple. You don't need to, you don't need a calculator. You don't need a slide rule, an abacus. You don't need to figure percentages. If you keep your grams of carbohydrate, 20 grams or fewer a day, eat fatty sources of protein, eat only when you're hungry and stop when you're satisfied, that's all you need to know. What's a fatty source of protein? <laughs> it's kind of the opposite diet. You know that, that uh, episode from Seinfeld where George does the opposite and his life becomes great? Do the opposite of everything you've been told. Eat eggs with the yolks. Eat chicken with the skin. Eat fatty sources of beef. Beef tenderloin, kind of useless to us in our household. Not enough fat. We'd have to wrap it in bacon to cook it. Get a chuck roast. Get higher fat percentage ground beef. Pork chops with a nice band of fat. Dark meat, which is fatter. Um, lamb chops with the fat. Bacon. Thick center cut is what we like around here. If you do dairy, it's not unlimited. But get full fat dairy. Full fat cheese. Heavy cream. I am drinking my cup of coffee. I have in it a little artificial sweetener. Big controversies over that, but I'll just tell you what I've done. I use Splenda. It does not bother me, hurt me. Um, I'm, I, I tend to not get into debates about the benefits or dangers of, of non-sugar sweeteners. Do what works for you. And heavy whipping cream, measured. Two teaspoons. It's not unlimited. So that's kind of what you do. You can have sour cream, not unlimited, but it certainly is fun. Blue cheese dressing, ranch dressing, mayonnaise. Again, not unlimited, but to, to, to add to your entree. Eat only when you're hungry. What does that mean? A lot of us don't know what hunger is anymore. It's been years. And actually, we never experienced true hunger. We had brain hunger. When you're burning glucose, because sugar cannot be stored in, in our blood, if your brain is burning glucose, you need to keep a steady supply. I've used this analogy many times. I'm going to say it again. It is like when you have a campfire going. You can burn a campfire with dried leaves and pine cones, but you better have a nearly endless supply of pine cones and dried leaves because the, that is cheap fuel, real cheap. So is glucose. If you want your fire to burn a nice long time and be efficient, Throw some aged hickory logs on there, and you can throw them on there and walk away. So your brain on glucose is the pine cones and dried leaves. Your brain on ketones, which it loves to burn, and some say functions better, 
dry kick free locks. So what is hunger then? It's something we have to learn. I had to learn it. Eat only when hungry for me was the most challenging aspect of this entire process. I lost, I don't remember, 45 pounds maybe. Felt great. And every time I hit a new low, I said, I don't care whether I lose another ounce, I feel so much better. Happily, I kept losing weight, but slow, not slowly, normally. But I got to the point where I was kind of slowing up. Question, why am I eating? Why am I standing here in front of my fridge? Am I hungry or am I here because I always stand in front of my fridge at this time? It turned out to be the latter. So eating only when hungry, and you will get to know what that is. It's a feeling, a, a not an unpleasant feeling of emptiness and of lightness. It is not, it is not a, it's not a, an emergency to be that hungry. Unlike some people, when we burn, when we were burning glucose for fuel, we would get hangry. Perhaps you, perhaps people you know and love. Really did not like being around either yourself or those people if they were hangry. Because they got in bad moods. Because their brain was telling them to eat. Not because they were going to die. But because their brain was getting saying, get me some more glucose. I, I've used up all the stuff. I need more. Get me some more right now. When you are burning ketones for fuel, I can remain at the same level of empty which is not quite yet hunger for me, but emptiness for hours. And I, and I don't have intrusive thoughts of food. So this is something we need to relearn for ourselves. Um, so again, and, and perhaps because I know many of you who are here, I recognize your names in your comments, have, are, have been doing the ketogenic diet. You've been successful. You love it. You've lost weight. Your friends and family are asking, what are you doing? First they ask, are, are you wearing your hair differently? That is still the first question I think most people get. Or are those new classes? But when they find out you're losing weight, how did you do that? You must be working your butt off. Nope, I don't exercise, I just dress like I do. Anyway, and you explain what it is. Oh, you keep your grams of carbohydrate 20 or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein and stop when you're, you know, eat when you're hungry, stop when you're thing. And they say, oh wow, that's great. But what do I do to get started? Now, they've heard what you've said, but they can't believe it's that simple. It is that straightforward. So you repeat it. Oh, you keep your grams of carbohydrate 20 or fewer a day. Yeah, yeah. Eat fatty sources of protein. Yeah, check. Okay. Eat only when you're hungry and stop when you're satisfied. Great. Now, how do I get started? Again, they'll ask. We have patience because this is so foreign. It is like learning to breathe underwater. It is so weird. But it really is that simple. You do not need to pile on grams of fat. It is not the presence of fat that gets one into ketosis. It's the absence of carb, carbohydrate. You do not need to eat a minimum number of cups of vegetables a day. As a matter of fact, that will be counterproductive. Carbohydrate is not an essential nutrient. Fat and protein are. Our bodies really need fat and protein. Don't need to eat carbohydrate. Our body is perfectly capable and efficient at creating the amount of glucose it needs to function beautifully through a process called gluconeogenesis. If someone is telling you to eat a minimum number of amount of vegetables and it sounds copious, and you're thinking, I don't know, I can eat that many vegetables. Why am I being told to eat this many vegetables? Ask yourself if that person is trying to sell you a substitute for eating that many vegetables, maybe in pill form. You don't need sub supplements. You don't need, you don't need to measure for ketones. If it, it, you're not measuring for ketones. You don't need to measure if you don't want to, the byproducts of burning ketones for fuel. I like it. I don't do it every day, but I was learning. And so I... Do that. Uh, use the the urine sticks are perfectly acceptable. Blood measure, but you don't need that. You don't need to drink your fat. 
MCT oil, unneeded, possibly will hinder. Exogenous ketones, same thing. I've used this analogy before. If your goal is to get pregnant and you start consuming products that will mimic symptoms of pregnancy for you or will show you a positive pregnancy reading on some test, but it's because you've been consuming the product. Is that going to get you to your ultimate goal? Do you want a positive reading on a test strip or do you want to be pregnant? Do you want to be burning body fat and reducing you know, weight and body fat and inflammation? Or do you want a positive reading on a strip because you've been drinking some product? Ask yourself what your goal is. If you like it, do it. Me? I'd rather spend the money on a full ribeye, which my husband then portions, and we eat ribeyes. Um, do what you want to do. Do what works for you. Keep in mind, if you think that the products are getting you into ketosis and you're following the program, the 20 grams or fewer a day, eating fatty sources of protein, eating only when you're hungry, do a test. If you're following the program, stop using the products and see if you're still getting the benefits you want. It could be a little bit of a flim flam. You know, if someone has a 24 hour bug and they are sold a product that says, this will cure your 24 hour bug in 24 hours. And it's essentially, you know, ionized water with some food coloring in it. And you take it and lo and behold, in 24 hours, the bug is gone. Come on now. It was going to go anyway. If you're eating 20 grams or fewer of carbohydrate a day, total, not net, and following the rest of the protocol, this will work. You don't need anything else. Harsh, I know. And I begrudge no one making a living. No one. I do begrudge people giving out inaccurate information in order to make their living. Just saying. Okay. Um, now, I've lost comments again, so I'm going to refresh my page. I'm, I apologize if anyone has directed a comment or question at me, good, bad, or indifferent, um, but I am not seeing comments. So, um, okay, so you, I'm so glad that you guys are talking to each other, and I'm so happy to see familiar faces. Um, I do want to share something. It's exciting. The weekend of March 16th through the 18th, 2018, in Greensboro, North Carolina, there is going to be a Go Keto with Casey Roadshow event. It is going to be small, intimate, hopefully very informative, hopefully very affordable. The meat of the program will be on March 17th, St. Patty's Day. Uh, I am hoping to come up with some social events Friday evening, and maybe we can go somewhere for a Sunday brunch. Um, details to follow. I'm really nascent at this and I'm a bit of a control freak so I try to do everything myself even though I have wonderful people have offered to help. So kind of save the date. Um, second, guess what came in yesterday? Let's see if I can put this in camera. No, I've just said you don't need to buy anything. You don't. You don't. This is a calendar. It's a Okita with Casey calendar. I've talked about it. On the back shows some of the phrases that we we talk about. Food is not is no longer the is not the boss of me. I'm doing this in reverse. Um, you know I don't. No one gets a vote on what you eat. And then on the inside are months, and it it shows every month just what whoop, just what I said. Keep your grams of carb carbohydrate twenty or fewer. Some notes, and this month I want to blank. So some motivational stuff. And then the rest of the course is the month. And then, although I think this is strange, I've been assured it is something people want. There are little scenes from around my house that people associate with me. There's a picture of a cuckoo. There's a picture of my deviled egg plate that apparently people lust after. Um, those will be up on my blog, go, uh, 
CaseyDurango.com under the Go Kid with Casey swag thing. I just, j they just came in. Um, so, you know, don't buy one for its calendar purposes because I promise you, you can get a free wall calendar from your insurance agent, probably from your dentist. Get it for free. This will not be for free, but it'll be for fun. And, you know, maybe it's, um, if it gives a little bit of a reminder every time. So I'll have those up. I don't know what the price will be. It's probably going to be around $20, including shipping. And the grocery bags that people have really liked are here as well. And they're really big. One of the people that bought them was so pleased to find out there's a zipper. It closes up the zipper. So anyway, those are available as well. Okay, I'm going to say again, though, you do not have to buy anything. This is totally for fun, as are the mugs and the wine glasses and the water bottles. You don't even need to buy a food scale. About the size of your fist of non-starchy vegetables a day, maximum, not minimum. And about the size of two fists of leafy greens, maximum, not minimum. Okay, what's a non-starchy vegetable? Some people don't know. Rule of thumb, this is not absolutely across the board. Starchy vegetables or starchier vegetables grow below the ground. Their job is to collect starch, which equals sugar, to keep the greens going. So carrot, all the, th the opposite, it's the, it's, you know, this is the George Costanza diet, do the opposite of what you've been told. No carrots, sweet potatoes, beets, uh, potatoes, potatoes. Peanuts, by the way, are not a nut, and FYI, nuts are not on the food list. You can get a copy of the food list I followed at my blog as well. Um, no grains. Grains are not vegetables, they're grasses. When you think of wheat, think of eating your front yard. You know, if you let your grass grow too long and it gets the little tassels at the top. Wheat, corn, these are grasses. So no grains, no rice. No matter whether they're whole grain or super refined, let me tell you what, you eat a, you eat a slice of Ezekiel bread, which is essentially sprouts, you eat a handful of M&Ms, you eat a bran muffin, doesn't matter. By the time it comes out your liver, it's simple sugar. That's all it is. So no starches and no sugars. No starchy vegetables at all. What vegetables can you eat? There's a long list. Around here, kind of our staples are green beans, not pinto beans or kidney beans, those are legumes. Green beans, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, salads, leafy greens, cucumbers, tomatoes we, we have in moderation, um, celery. There's a really long list. That just happens to be the staple around our house. By the way, I've been asked and I might do it. I might put out some kind of thing, whether it's going to be in video or ebook format or something, Casey the Lazy Cook, cook Cooks Keto. For me, it's pretty simple. Cast iron skillet, fatty source of meat, reserved bacon fat, and he got a meal. Liver. Um, liver is great, really nutritious. Oh, hey, Karen. Um, Okay, and I do see a comment. Genevieve Brooks Ritter, I've fallen off my diet bad. I gained 15 pounds over the last couple of months. So disappointed in myself. I really need to get back to watching. Well, you don't, thank you. You don't need to get back to watching my videos. That's a very great compliment. Just next time, and don't wait, Genevieve, don't wait for the new year. Don't wait for Monday. Don't wait for tomorrow. You know, when the person asks you, okay, that sounds great, how do I get started? The next time you put food in your mouth, leave off the carbs. That's it. Keep in mind that it's 20 grams or fewer a day of carbohydrate, and zero is fewer than 20. You can do it. You can do it, and a lot of us need more than one at bat, okay? It happens. Being challenged... Um, it's not be, it's not failing. I'm challenged in a lot of things. <laughs> they have nothing to do with food. 
And I struggle with a lot of things. Not food, really. Um, I used to, but this just worked for me immediately, probably because I was so far down. It looked like up to me anything. I was 55, and I'd given up. Just because you're challenged doesn't mean you're, you're failing. Just plow through it. Set a timer for yourself, Genevieve. Set a timer. Okay, maybe in 15 minutes I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat what I'm thinking about eating right now that's not good for me. But right now I'm not going to eat it. And then get yourself through that. And ask, and ask yourself this. One of, one of the other things that's on the calendar, one of the months is um, if hunger is not your problem, food is not the answer. Isn't that the truth? Really? What is that basket of chips going to, what problem is that going to solve for you? We have to ask ourselves some hard questions. And then we have to be prepared that when we've kind of gotten over medicating ourselves and stuffing ourselves down with food, literally, we have to deal with some of those issues that we're trying to avoid. That's another set of, that's another set of videos. <laughs> you know, it's like someone who's been medicating with alcohol. And then they realize, oh my God, my, this is my life and I, now I have to deal with it sober? Yes, you do. You mean I have to deal with this without ice cream? Yes, you do. And you can. That's the whole thing. You can and you will. If I can do this, you can do this. Please look at my before photos. I need to write, it's more than photos. I need to write more about where I was in my heart, brain, and spirit before this because that's really the most dramatic change. For me, the rest has been gravy. Oh, you should pardon the expression. It's been blue cheese dressing. Okie dokie. I want to thank uh, my patrons. Uh, I quickly want to say, if you are out there and you are a former patron and you left because patron made a boneheaded decision, which they've now reversed, about off offloading fees from like from me, from the creator, to the patrons. They didn't ask my vote on that. They have reversed that. They got very strong feedback. So I am happy to pay all the fees. If you left and you want to reconsider coming back, and if that was the reason you left, that they've reversed it um, effective immediately. If you left because, you know, you didn't enjoy it all, you could stand, that's one thing. But I do want to let you know, and thank you to Margie for the um, suggestion about putting that out there. All right, guys. Does anyone have, I can see the comments now, they are scrolling. Does anyone have anything they either want to share, I, you guys have been sharing, a question for me, a, a, a victory, or a particular challenge? Okay, Vanita. I'm 57, down 20, 20 to go, feeling depressed this morning, but you can do this. You know, I don't know about you, Vanita. I suffered um, from depression, pretty chronic depression, and that has been one of the greatest changes for me. That does not mean that every day I am doing cartwheels. No. It just means that I deal with things differently now, And but my lows are no... My lows now are where before I, I would have hoped to get to that. You know, my, my lows dip here. Previously, I'd gotten to the point where my highest days were lower than my lowest days are now, if that makes sense. Um, my tree, I know, honey, you're getting a calendar. No doubt about it. Uh, I, have to, I have to get them on there. I have to photograph them and come up with it. And I would get my... Um, office manager or my PR person to do it for me, but oops, that's me. So I don't have anyone else to do it. It'll just take me a while. But you will definitely get one. Okay, Eva Cheeks. Casey, what do you think about this? I'm 5'6", 129. Was originally 143. Lost baby weight with keto. I want to be 127. I'm a healthy BMI currently, but I'm stalled for the last... Mm -mm -mm. It went away. Um... I'm going to tell you the last pounds are slow. If you're very close to where you want or slash need to be, just stick with it. I, um, I'm, I'm, excuse me, I was just checking to make sure it was not one of my kids texting me. Um, just stick with it. And, and I'm going to really give you some 
heartfelt advice. Forget about the number on the scale. If you're that close, you're healthy, you're feeling good, you, you know, screw the scale. I would like to lose about five more pounds, and I know fully that that is vanity and ego. I already weigh less than I would have paid 20, 20, someone $20,000 to make me weigh. If I could have written a check, say, here's $20,000, yes, put me at that weight, I'm already below it. I would like to lose five more. Why? It's arbitrary. Forget about that. Plus, you've had a baby. Things shift. Things, I mean, you can look great, but things change. You know, many of us have many children. I have three adult children um, who are all approaching middle age. And um, your body just changes. Ha be happy with it. Screw the scale, baby. I still weigh every day. It's my practice. It is a tool that serves me. If it is a tool that hurts your feelings and does not serve you, back off from it for a while. <laughs> Kim, what's best place to start? I'm not sure if that is a serious question. Best place to start? Next time you put food in your mouth, leave off the carbs. That's the best place to start. Check your sources. Please, 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 please be careful of your sources for information. Okay? It is not my practice to call out names. And again, I begrudge no one for making a living. Heck, I'm trying to sell calendars. But people who are giving you conflicting information or selling you products, if they have just sold out, even if they're giving okay information, but, but really every other thing out of their mouth is selling a product of some sort, that not a product like an item, like a thing, but oils and pills and powders and smoothies that are supposed to help you be successful. The only thing you need to do on this diet to be successful is exactly as it's laid out. 20 grams or fewer of carbohydrate a day. Eat fatty sources of protein. Eat only when you're hungry. Stop when you're satisfied. Zero dollars invested. And as a matter of fact, your grocery bills will go down. Almost guaranteed. Very serious. Nowhere to go. Don't know. I'm not, I'm not getting you, Kim. Um, does it matter what time of day we eat? No. That question has been asked and answered by, oh, here's another thing. Think about your source, your source of information. Because there are a lot of people that claim to be experts and anyone can slap the word keto on anything they do or any product they sell. I'm waiting for the keto bottled water to come out. I'm sure it will. Um, if someone's life mission is talking about this nutrition protocol, if their life's work is about it and what they want to do is give you information, that's different from someone whose livelihood is solely based on selling to you. Just saying. And some people are good at baiting and switching. They talk a good game and then they divert you to smoothies and powders and pills. Just my opinion, guys. You do what works for you. What about if you have gastritis? To my knowledge and to, you know, I have, I have, um, I've, these questions have been asked a lot and have the, the great benefit of being able to speak on a regular basis with Dr. Eric Westman. He's the Dr. Eric you need to be following. Be careful of other Dr. Eric's. Um, there's, he, I asked him point blank in front of the group, is there any medical condition for which this is contraindicated? I said, no. He couldn't think of one. Not that he's seen in 20 years of clinical and research investment into this. Um, so guess right, a lot of things are cleared up by it. Some people think that it will exacerbate non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. No, it will probably clear it up. Some people think it will exacerbate gout. No, probably clear it up after uh, maybe initial flare-up. 
Some people think it will exacerbate GERD. No, it will probably clear it up. So, if you have a gallbladder, don't have a gallbladder. Have a thyroid, don't have a thyroid. Hypothyroid, hyperthyroid. It's all good. Um, Su Susanna Ruiz, talk about cholesterol numbers, please. Okay. First of all, the overall cholesterol number, not very important. It's one of the doctor's quote, and they get freaked out about it, and then they freak you out about it, and they want to put you on a statin. A full lipid profile, which most doctors don't order, some seriously don't even know what it is. It's called an NMR. I think that's nuclear magnetic resonance lipid test. You want to look at triglycerides and HDL. That's like the biggest thing right there. You want low triglycerides, high HDL. Um, or or at least them to be the same number. If they're not the same, you want the, the triglyceride number to be lower than the HDL. Pretty good there. The next thing is they're not just one kind of LDL. There's at least two. And you want very few of the small stickies and as many as you want of the big fluffies. So there's that. Um, yes, thank you. Someone asked about menus. And, and really... Um, that's another thing I know people really want. I need to knuckle down and try to share it, but I do have week of week of food videos that I put out, just what we eat around here. And there's Miss Cindy Spear. Happy weekend. Are you signing off or signing on, Cindy? Um, stalling is frustrating, but... Okay, what about hyperlipidemia? Another thing, this is, it can be slower... But Dr. Westman has attended seminars on this, and I asked him specifically about that, and Jackie Everstein, uh, when we were in San Diego. Absolutely, it can be slower, but it can be effective. You just, you know, some of these, some of these special challenges are just special challenges. Um, hey, Denise, good morning. Carlos and I are enjoying your wisdom this morning. Denise is a patron. Carlos is her lovely mate. And we think we have twin husbands. Can't wait to meet you guys if you are able to make it in March. That would be fantastic. All the way from California. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign up. I will not be here next Saturday because it is Christmas Eve Eve. And we are attending an annual uh, brunch that some very good friends put up. And I want to share something with you. Um, I am very lucky. And that my circle of friends, almost to a person, and whether they agree with this way of eating or not, when they have dinners or cocktail parties or brunches, they almost all provide a, a keto-friendly version. That is one of the kindest things that I can think of. I love it. I want to say, if, my, if I haven't said it to my friends, and if any of you are listening, I don't think my friends or family particularly listen to me on these things, I want to thank you. Whether I've thanked you in person, whether I see you very often anymore or not, those acts of kindness are not lost. And if you can do the same for somebody else, if you can make it easier on somebody else, then good on you. And someone posted in the uh, Patreon forum today that she's getting ready to go, I think it was Annie, that she's going to a Christmas party and she's taking deviled eggs and antipasto essentially. Black olives, green olives, some drizzled olive oil, and uh, maybe some hard salami. Fantastic. Perfectly keto generous. She will not have to worry about it. And those dishes always kind of seem to go first anyway. The deviled eggs always disappear. And they're perfectly keto. So, um, hey, Christine, how you doing? Hey, Christine, I hope, I hope uh, you and, and Rod are doing really, really well. Okay, guys, and they are a great success story. I'm going to sign off. Thanks for joining. If you do, uh, people have asked about Patreon. It's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash go keto with KC, and that is a lot of... Uh, Patron-only content there. I do daily, weekday videos every day, little snippets. And there are there's a forum for patrons only. 
and there is, uh, like this afternoon, I'm actually getting ready in just a few minutes to be doing a group chat, video chat, and then we have a Friday live stream. So there's a lot of content there. So thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me into your home. Please keep it simple. If there's a lot of noise out there. A lot of it is well-intentioned but ill-informed. Some of it is not really well-intentioned. Gotta say, some of it's just wrong. Do what works for you. But if what you're doing is not working for you, ask yourself, are you keeping your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day? Are you only eating when you're hungry? Are you piling on the dietary fat? Because it's not pile on a bunch of fat, it's eat fatty sources of protein. Ask yourself those questions. And remember that even though food is allowed, it's not mandatory, compulsory, or unlimited necessarily. So, there you are. Thanks, and I will see you two weeks from today. Happy holidays to everyone, no matter what you celebrate. And if you don't celebrate at all, have a great couple of weeks. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others, of course. And remember, if I can do this, any freaking buddy can do it. Anyone can do it. I was a lost cause in my own mind. I had given up. You can do it. Have a great one. I'll get the calendars up on the website ASAP. Thanks, guys.